Hey, it's Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon, and let's talk a little bit about anchors. How to choose the right anchor for your boat. Well, it depends on a couple of different things. It depends on the size of your boat, the type of body of water, and the bottom that you're going to be anchoring in, um, and the storage areas that you have on your boat. So I've got two of my favorite right here. We'll talk about a third as well. This is the Danforth, or the Fluke Style uh, Fortress is a brand that uh, we offer that has the forks that we're gonna dig in. This is the box anchor. I also like the Delta or the plow anchor is what it's called. You'll find that there's a lot of various names for, uh, for the same type of anchor. So let's talk about how this one works and why I like this in a lot of situations is number one, it's very versatile with these big pointy flukes that are gonna dig in and then with the weight down here, it's gonna allow this to kind of maneuver around and dig into the bottom, sand, mud, clay. It doesn't do a great job in weeds or rocks, uh, but in most bottoms. And then you shackle a chain on, and what will happen is those dig in, and then as your boat's bouncing with that chain, it's gonna keep that nice and still. Now, if you forget the chain and you tie your anchor road right to here, what's gonna happen is now you're actually making those flukes unbury themselves from the bottom and now you're going to lose hold so the chain is really the key a five foot section of chain shackled on <laughs> i got a little dog barking in the background there trying to get on video shackled on the other end of the chain shackled on to your anchor road okay that's the fluke style or the fortress we've got a little tool that will help you determine based on the size and weight of your boat what size of an anchor you need. But typically for a, you know, a seven, 10 to 12 pound is gonna be uh, from a 16 foot up to a 26 foot boat um, on those, okay? The next we have the box anchor. Now, the box anchor is kind of a newer addition um, and it's not gonna be your traditional, your old salt's gonna say that's, you don't need a box anchor, but I've talked to enough new boaters, used it myself and can say, this is a very versatile, very easy to use anchor. With the Danforth, not only do you need to have the five foot of chain, but you also need to put out a lot of anchor ropes for that scope. You want it usually three to five to one if it's really easy conditions, five to seven to one if it's tougher conditions. And if you're anchoring overnight or it's really bad, you want a 10 to one scope. That's gonna allow those flukes to stay dug in and to really hold tight. Well, if you're anchoring in a cove, if you're anchoring around a lot of other boats, uh, or you've got a weedy or a rocky bottom, um, this anchor is gonna be a great option. It's also good in clay and mud and sand. But what's gonna happen is, one, it's a little bit heavier on its own, but it's got these big gnarly teeth that are gonna dig in. And if the it flips over, it's gonna dig in on that side. So it's always gonna land and have those flukes to dig in. With this, you don't need as much scope, so you can get away with a two to one, three to one ratio. So if you're in 10 feet of water, that means 20 or 30 feet of anchor line, which means it's more up and down and your radius that you're gonna spin is a lot shallower. Um, although this is heavier and it looks kind of big and bulky, it will, fold right down into this right here. So it's great for pontoons. It'll lay under the front seat nice and easy um, because it's flat. But on some of your, your V-Haul boats, it's not gonna fit very well in the anchor locker. It's not gonna be long and deep enough to get these big giant teeth in there. So that, that's where the storage comes in. It's a great option for a lot of boaters, but just make sure it's actually gonna fit and you're gonna have a place to stow it on your boat. When you're ready to deploy it, all you do is you, you lock in this little pin right here. And now it's nice and sturdy. So that's the box anchor. For your box anchor, you're gonna be looking 14 to 21, maybe up to 26 pounds. Uh, up to a 26, 28 foot boat, uh, and uh, a lot of great holding power, really easy to use on the box anchor. You can get away with no road or no chain, uh, but you still need your anchor road connected here. On your anchor road, I like this chafe resistant um, covering right here. There's a name for it that's escaping me right now, but you shackle directly to that, and now that, um, that shackle isn't gonna wear uh, your anchor road right here, causing it to potentially fray and break 
losing your expensive anchor at the bottom of the at the bottom of the uh, waterway that you're on. This is a double braided, which if you get a good high quality, can be okay. It gets a little bit to me a little bit slick when you're handling it once it gets wet. I like the three strand for my for my anchor road. It's just it's a little bit more solid. It's a little easier to work with as you're pulling that up hand to hand. Now, if you have a windlass, if you have a boat that has a windlass, now I particularly like the plow or the delta anchor. It's just what it looks like. It looks like a plow. They look really nice hanging off your bow pulpit uh, and hanging out of that uh, that windlass setting. It looks great. The chain can hook right up to it. You may have a full length of chain or you may have a, a section of you know, 20, 25 foot of chain and then going to your anchor rope that's the appropriate size. In those situations, I like that plow anchor. Although they don't do well in weeds, um, they, uh, they don't do well in rock either, uh, especially in rock, but in all the other bottoms, they do a great job and they have a lot, a lot of holding power in current, uh, which, is, which is really nice. So, that's what you need to know. A couple of things about your setup. If you're going to go with the Danforth, if you're going to go with the Delta or the plow anchor, you need the chain. And anytime you're shackling your chain to your anchor road or your anchor directly to your anchor road, I like to put a little bit of um, galvanized or stainless steel wire on the shackle, wrap it up and tie it around there real good. Make sure that that pointy end isn't sticking out so it doesn't jab somebody when you're deploying the anchor. Um, but that will keep that shackle nut from coming out and again, potentially losing your expensive anchor. Now, when you're setting your anchor, we've talked about the scope and the chain. Those are the two biggest mistakes I see people make. The other is they just throw the anchor in. I used to do this when I was a kid. It was always fun to throw the anchor over and watch all the line go out. Well, what can happen is the chain can get wrapped around and um, you know, it gets wrapped around the fluke or the anchor road gets tied up in one of the um, one of your uh, claws here. The best thing to do is pull out a section of road that you think is about how deep you are and then just set it down in the water. Once you get it set, you want to point your bow into the wind and the waves and that's going to allow your bow to take all that and just do what it naturally does when you're underway. What you don't want to do is you don't want to set your transom anchor first. What that's going to do is the wind and the waves are going to lap up against your boat and potentially, if it's bad enough, potentially swamp it or a big wave comes because you're anchored there, although it's held down and that wave can come in over the top of your boat. Not good. Always anchor your bow first into the wind and the waves. Um, and then if you want to set a stern anchor, you can set your stern anchor. You don't need as much road there. You don't need as much weight. So the river anchor um, or a navy anchor can be a good setup there. They're a little bit heavier, a little bit easier to maneuver, and they hold more on, on the weight. The navy anchor's got the flukes like this, but they're not quite as sharp and pointy. Um, and um, they work a little bit better in the weeds and the rock because of their, their weight does some of the work. The river anchor, if you're in the river, can do a good job in the, in the rocks and in the weeds. But another anchor that I like, if you go to the sandbar or you go to a shallow cove and you anchor out, um, are the anchor poles where you just you put them down in the water and you tie off on a on a stern cleat and that's going to keep you from swinging around and swaying. So if you're in a big busy cove with everybody, you're not flowing into other people. You've got your bow anchor set. And that's the main one, and then your secondary anchor is just to stop the swing. Those pole anchors, um, a smaller fluke, a smaller box anchor, a uh, navy anchor can do the trick there, and that's really just to hold the boat from swinging. It's not holding the whole weight of the boat. That's what you need to know about anchors. If you got specific questions, we'd love to have you join us on our Sunday night lives that we do on YouTube and Facebook. If you're looking for an anchor, we have those down at the ship store uh, at Boater Secret Weapon. You can check those out. And uh, we've got the anchor set up, the Fortress Fluke anchors. Uh, we've got the road and the chain, everything that you need. And uh, remember, life truly is better on a boat.